Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good morning sir. sir. Good morning, sir. Can you open come? Okay, so I can I acknowledge the presence of 4, 8, 12, 15, half of the class. We are supposed to be 30. Okay, so without... Okay. So with or without your classmates, we we have to proceed. It's already seven fifty nine. Seven forty seven. So since it's our first day, we will be discussing our syllabus for P four. Do we have a class representative? Meron na ba kayong class representative or class president, class officers? In your no black section? Yet, Come again? Ah, wala Not pa. Not yet, sir. Wala pa. Sige, wala pa. Anyways, without so much ado, and not to waste much of our time, let's uh, move on with the discussion on our syllabus. Allow me to share my screen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is our course syllabus for P4. So this is not a board subject, however, it is a requirement in your course via screen. So this course deals with the study of the fundamentals of marksmanship. It covers the respective mandates, processes, and interrelation of gun ownership, care, possession, handling of firearms, marksmanship, pistol, and rifle drills treatment of malfunctions, and other forms of related exercises. So, our course learning outcomes are as follows. In completion to our course, the student, you, must be able to discuss the essence of marksmanship in relation to law enforcement rules and objectives. So, you should be able to explain the importance of learning marksmanship, what in relation to the goals and objectives of law enforcement. Okay, ano ba ang importansya ng pagiging marksman in relation to police operations, in arrest, and so on and so forth, di ba? So dapat matutulan yun din yan. Apply the process of application of gun ownership. Okay lang. Uh, I'll let you talk later. <laughs> You have to apply the process of application for gun ownership. You could not just possess your gun without licenses, okay? Otherwise, you will be <laughs> facing charges of illegal possession of firearm. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. So, before you could possess a firearm, you should have at least an LTOP. Ano yung LTOP? License to own and possess firearm. And you should have a firearms license. Yan. And also, for you to be able to carry your firearms outside of your residence, you should also have your PTC4, Permit to Carry Firearms Outside Residence. Yan. So, that's a part of your, our discussion later on. We have to appreciate the vital function of law enforcement agencies in relation to gun ownership and markmanship. So the vital function of law enforcement in relation to uh, gun ownership and markmanship. You have to learn and apply the gun safety rules. That's the very important thing you have to learn before you apply for the for gun ownership. The gun safety rules. You have to know how to assemble and disassemble a firearm. 
in preparation for its care treatment of firearm malfunction, di ba? So, why do you learn? Why do you have to learn this assembly and assembly of firearm? For its maintenance. Bakit? Kasi lilinisin nyo rin yan eh. Hindi lang naman yung outside ang lilinisin nyo. Dapat pati rin yung inside, di ba? And after cleaning, you should know how to assemble it back. And likewise, uh, for you to understand how to treat the malfunctions. Pagka pumuputok kayo, biglang later on, natikil. May malfunction. At least, you should know how to treat that malfunction. We also have to determine the factors that affects firing accuracy. Yan. Diba? Ano ba yung mga dahilan kung bakit hindi kayo tumatama? So, malamang may violation tayo. Mayroon tayong technique na hindi alam. So, that's the scope of our discussion. The factors that affects firing accuracy. Perform the pistol and or rifle exercise as form of dry firing with observance <coughs> and application of their first topic in preparation for the actual firing. So, before your actual firing, we have to do pistol and or rifle drills depending on the situation kung kakayanin ng oras natin and of course, depending on our available resources kung meron, kung kaya ng resources natin. We have to apply the concept of markmanship in practicum. Yan. Apply the treatment of malfunction, of course. Pagka pumuputok kayo later on, biglang ng malfunction, dapat alam nyo kung paano i-treat yung malfunction. Perform the proper care and maintenance of firearm. Now, how do you maintain your firearm? How do you care for it? How do you uh, prolong? It's lifespan para tumagal siya. Hindi siya masira kagad. And last, you have to assess yourself about your possible contribution to the community in relation to the learnings in this subject. So, mas kaya ano, ang dami nating na topic, ang dami nating topic. Ano yung pwede nyo may contribute after learning those topic? Ano yung pwede nyo may contribute sa community? Okay. So, our intended learning outcomes are as follows. And we have here our learning activities. Magkata. Yes, Awing. Yes, po, sir. May sasabi ka? Wala po. Okay, kindly mute your phone. Ay, your phone. <laughs> your mic if you're not talking. <laughs> mm. Okay, so our intended learning outcomes were already read a while back. So what are our activities? So, our activities includes PowerPoint presentation, visual aids, lecture discussion, and actual performances. Yan. Nabasa na natin ito kanina. Treat malfunction, perform proper care and maintenance of firearm, apply all concepts of markmanship in the practicum, identify possible contributions to the community in relation to matters learned in this subject. So you also have to demonstrate. You also have to recite and you will be also having quizzes in this subject. So our course policy are as follows. Because without the policy, we cannot be organized. Okay? So, these are our, our policies. As a criminology student, nurture the tradition and discipline and respect at any time and place, especially when the eyes of the public are at the witness of your acts. You are criminology students, you are future policemen, so you should be uh, living 
as an example. Okay? You must observe proper haircuts. Kailan ko na rin magpagupit. And grooming in appropriate attire before joining online discussion or interactions. So, dapat nasa proper attire kayo. Kanina, may mga bagong gising. Nakahiga pa. Okay lang. First day of classes. But, uh, sa susunod, you should be complying with this. You have to observe proper grooming. So, tama dapat yung suit natin. Hindi nakapangbahay. Hindi nakashort. Hindi nakapek-pek short sa mga babae. Hindi, ang tawag dito? Hindi kita yung mga uh, puson. In your classroom, I believe you are required to wear formal attires, di ba? Aside from the uh, uniform, general office attire. So, you must not use vulgar words or any inappropriate manners that might distract the attention of the instructor, professor, or any member of the class. You should refrain from allowing other people, not a member of this class, to distract or pop out in the screen, especially during interactions. So, in online discussions, you should make sure that your background is not distracted. Uh, destructive to others. Dapat wala kayong background na gumagalaw-galaw dyan. O kaya dapat yung camera nyo hindi nakatutok sa may pinto ng CR. Baka mamaya may biglang lawa sa CR nakatuwalya o madidistract ang klase. And likewise, you are also not allowed to share our links to other persons not a member of this class. Kung ano yung sa atin, para lang sa atin. Don't forward it to other member uh, to other non-member of this class. You should be responsible enough to comply and submit all requirements in the subject. Take note, ladies and gentlemen, that even one activity, if you miss that one activity with the biggest point, it may result to your failing. Uh, it may result to your failing grade. Yan. Bakit? Because your grade, your midterm, midterm grade is 50% of your class standing plus 50% exam. Now, if you have no class standing, na mismo yung malaking puntos, let's say for example, 100 points yung, yung pinakamalaki over, let's say for example, 150 yung total na class standing, eh, hindi ka pumasa. Wala kang 50% doon, di ba? Kumbaga, na mismo kagad yung 100, ang maximum man, kung mayroon ka, 50 over 150 lang. Same is true with your exam. In every 100 uh, items exam, you should have at least 50 for you to have a passing grade. So, do your activity sheet. Anay. You should submit all requirements within the allotted time of compliance and shall bear in mind that the quality of your learning output will be the basis of your grade or score on a particular activity. So, you have to submit on time, ladies and gentlemen. Anong sabi? Anhin mo pa ang kabayo kung walang damo. O, balik tad pala. <laughs> anhin mo pa ang kabayo. Ay, hindi. Anhin mo pa ang damo kung wala ng kabayo. Win. Diba? So, don't ever submit it late. Otherwise, it will not be accepted. Always submit your requirements on time. Kung ano yung due date, submit you that day. Unless you are validly excused, pwede siguro. However, you cannot ever attain the highest possible score. Yun. Pwede kong tanggapin, pero hindi pwede mabigyan ng highest possible score. We will also be talking about the three classes of validly excused uh, <coughs> students from absenting them selves mga pwedeng ma validly accepted na absent so you have to do your sheet assignments yourself and observe the ethics of scholarship you may discuss your work with each other for example during online study session or in a study group off schedule. 
So, outside. In case na nagchichismis kayo, pwede kayong mag-usap with your classmate about your your learnings or your assignment. Pero huwag magkupyahan. And you should do it yourself. Huwag niyo ipagawa sa iba. Huwag niyo ipagawa sa girlfriend niyo. Sa best friend niyo. Dapat kayo ang gumawa. You must avoid plagiarism and other forms of unlawful acts defined under the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines. Ano ba ang plagiarism? You're copying the work of the others without acknowledging the owners. Okay? That's plagiarism. Especially observed in researches or thesis writing. If you borrow or use an idea from another source, meaning someone other than yourself, if you borrow the idea from someone other than yourself, be sure to before to uh, be sure to cite that source or sources. Enclose quoted material in quotation marks or use italics and write the source, but uh, as much as possible, paraphrase. You have to paraphrase. Do not copy it in toto as it was written on the book. You have to paraphrase it or rephrase. Acknowledge sources and make a bibliography of them at the end of the assignment. Following the APA format. What is the APA format? American Psychological Association Guidelines. Now, if you don't know the APA format, you can consult http owl.englishperju.edu slash owl. Andiyan yan, APA format. However, this can be applied only when the activity allows citations of bases, references, or uh, bases. But those activities having require, having that require comprehension, where answers must be based on the discussion and understanding, borrowing from the idea of others are not allowed. Like in essay, di ba? Kaya dapat ang sumagot sa essay. Hindi nyo dapat i-research yun. Yes, sir. Leymar. Uh, Leymar sir, sorry to interrupt uh, the class, but somebody is asking sa GC po kung anong passcode na itong Zoom. Ah, hindi ba yung link? Po. Hindi ba siya makakonect na lang sa link? Uh, sir, nanghihingi po yata ng passcode. So, passcode yung sa kanya. Sorry. Pas, okay lang. I think I have to stop this uh, share muna bago siya lumabas. Can you check the screenshot? Okay, so it was already forwarded in our group chat. Okay, so let's resume. Allow me again to share this, to share my screen. Ayan. So, can you see my screen, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. you should respect... Yeah. Yes? Any statement? 
So, let's assume, you should respect the authority of your instructor in delivering the program of your subject. If you have personal concerns as arising from the subject, contact your instructor through a private message and observe respect in your queries or response. Participate actively in each discussion to maximize your learning. Why? Because uh, recitation and active participation forms, forms part of your class standing. Try hard to follow our syllabus. So, I'll be sending you a copy of the syllabus and you may do your advanced learning, reading, or watching. Refrain from unnecessary absences. The only valid excuse students are those first whose immediate family member or members are criti uh, critically ill or whose family member has just died. Yan lang yung, yung pwede nating tanggapin na excuse absent student. When we say immediate family, it must be within your immediate family. Hindi pwede yung Lolo mo, o kaya apo mo kung mayroon ka ng apo. Okay? So, pagka nagkasakit critically ang nanay mo, o pwede kang, ikaw yung mga asikaso sa kanya, pwede kang ma-absent. I can accept your activity, kahit na late, but will not be given the highest possible score. Okay? So, what will be your attachment in your excuse letter? In that case, pwede the medical certificate of your immediate family member, Pag namatay, death certificate, pero uh, wag naman sana. Diba? So, those should be the attachment of your excuse letter. Next is working students, scholars, or athletes who are representing the institution, the University of the Cordilleras, or the country in an interdepartmental, provincial, regional, national, or international activities. So, in case you are an athlete and you have a competition, international competition and you miss the activity you miss an activity or the exam because of that international competition then you can be excused provided you have a proof that you actually attended that national or international regional provincial interdepartmental competition that would be your at attachment to your excuse letter Last but not the least are students who were confined or isolated for medical reasons. Pagka kayo mismo, students, ay na-absent dahil na-confined. Saan na-confined? Because of uh, illnesses. O kaya na-isolate dahil nag-positive sa COVID. Then you can be excused. So you send me your excuse letter with the valid attachment. Ano yung attachment? Of course, medical certificate. Pagka walang attachment, it will not be accepted, of course. Nagsisnungaling ka lang, di ba? Rule on evidence. Dapat may evidence, always. Submit activity sheets on or before their due dates. So, submit it on or before their due dates. Not after their due dates. It, it will not be accepted unless you are excused validly. You will be duly informed and reminded about the deadline of each activity sheet. Late activity sheet will be accepted if you are if you are excused, provided that there is a valid reason for the delay with corresponding appropriate attachment or proofs. To so, sabi natin pagka excuse kayo. However, they cannot be awarded the highest possible score. Kahit na mas maganda yung gawa nyo kaysa sa mga nagawa nagawa ng mga naunang nag-submit, it cannot be given the highest possible score because of its delay. And timeliness is a factor. Always keep a duplicate copy of your activity sheet in your files just in case you need to resubmit them. Such as in cases that when they are lost in transit or there's a technical glitch. Ano yung mga technical glitch? Yung sir, Nasend ko naman yung compliance ko nung on time. Pero bakit wala akong score dyan sa class standing nyo? Chinek namin yung receive uh, messages ko, wala. Chinek namin yung send items niya, ay wala rin. So, means to say, malamang nung sinend niya, kasi mangyayakya eh, talagang parang sinend, sinend niya talaga. Pero wala nga sa send items niya. 
So what do what's our alternative? We have to check if he actually had created or crafted or drafted such project. So mayroon naman siyang pinakita. And we can review its metadata at makikita natin kung kailan nagawa at kailan na save yung document na yun. If it was created before the due date, pwedeng i-accept. Pagka after the due date, no, it cannot be. So, are you still there, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Malapit na tayo. Always keep a, a duplicate yan. Students are prohibited from going to computer shop unless it is allowed by the advisory from IETF or the government authority. Any forms of cheating in online classes? Ano yung mga cheating in online classes? Yung nakalagin kayo, pero permission to off-cam, wala pala. Uh, worse, uh, mas malala naman to, nakalagin. Nakikita natin na parang may tao talagang gumagalaw, pero GIF pala. Yung ginawa niyang background niya, virtual background niya. Wala pala siya, GIF lang, lang, GIF lang pala yung nakikita kung akala ko present. That's cheating. So, cheating in online classes. Cheating in quizzes, assignments, or exams are prohibited. Cheating includes, but are not limited to the following. Not obedience, uh, not obedience to the instructions. The mere fact that you disobeyed an instruction during quizzes, exam, it's tantamount to cheating already. Requesting to turn off camera or usage of GIF as background during online discussions. Saving, sending, or receiving a screenshot picture of the questions, answers. That's also a form of cheating. Opening of a separate browser to search for the answer. That's also cheating. Take note, ladies and gentlemen, that we have a system that can detect in online exams ah, or online quizzes that can detect if you have opened a browser. Once you open a new browser, the exam or the quiz will automatically close and you cannot reopen it. So, we to say, technically, nag-cheat kayo pagka ganun yung nangyari na biglang na-close na wala yung exam browser nyo. Ang open na lang is yung bago nyong in-open na uh, browser. Which is, uh, siguro pwedeng gagamitin pang cheat doon hanapin yung sagot. Kaya don't ever attempt to cheat in online classes. Usage of chat GPT is also not allowed. Group answering and quizzes or exams which are supposedly individual. That's also a form of cheating. And having someone to do their homework, assignment, quizzes or exam for students. So those are forms of cheating. And you know for a fact, the consequences of cheating, your work will not be credited. It is. It will be null and void. Okay? Always adhere to the protocols that are being implemented by the government. Huwag naman sanang magka-COVID ng other variant ulit. Ensure that proper discipline is always being observed. Any concerns, please contact your instructor, advisor, or you may refer to the criminology organization, president, college, advisor, or to the college dean, Dr. Robino Kawi. And it's the students who make their grade. The output is irrevocable. Any attempt to bargain is forbidden. Marami na akong maging, naging student na ganito ha. During class discussion, nang insulto-insulto. Akala niya pasado, akala niya magaling na siya. Here comes finals, bagsak. Sa kamang iyak-iyak. Hindi na, irrevocable na yung result ko. Noon na yung nalabas sa final grade nyo, yun na yun. Wala na akong magagawa doon. It's you who contributed to your grades, okay? Kung ano yung sinasubmit nyo activity, kung ano yung mga result ng assignment nyo, ng quizzes nyo, ng exam nyo, ng marksmanship practicum firing nyo, eh, yun na yun. Eh, all I have to do is to input that in our Excel. Ano yung Excel ng UC? Meron na siyang formula. Hindi pwedeng mabago yung formula nun. So all I have to do is to input the scores. Kung anong lalabas, eh, di kukopyain ko lang. Yun lang yun, yun ang maging grade nyo. So we have here synchronous section house rules in case of online classes. 
Wear your uniform during the scheduled online classes. You should prepare yourself and all needed materials before attending in uh, before attending online classes or before even attending classes, face-to-face -face classes. So what should be the materials you have to prepare? It includes the following syllabus, your books if you have references, handouts, notebook and pen. You should always take down notes and of course your yellow paint pad paper. Always bring that. Kung wala kayong yellow paper, biglang may unannounced twist, eh, wala kayong masasamit. Wala kang papel. Buti kung may good Samaritan na magpabigay. Ay magbigay. House rule during Zoom or Google Meet discussions. Find a good location that will avoid any distraction to the lecturer and other viewers. Use the logo of the university or the college as your virtual background. Sa mga inter-school lang ito nakita mostly. Ah. Sa mga second, first year, parang wala. GIFs are not allowed. Mute your microphone when you are not talking. You can unmute your microphone only if you are to recite or raise some questions or clarifications. Avoid any uh, any offensive word, vulgar words. Otherwise, you can be subject for the filing of appropriate charges. Stay focused and be aware of your surroundings. So when we say uh, be aware of your surroundings. Uh, be sure to observe possible calamities. Baka mamaya sa sobrang focus nyo, hindi nyo nakikita yung background nyo, eh, landslide na pala. O kaya earthquake na pala, okay? So stay focused and at the same time, be aware of your surroundings. You are highly encouraged to stay seated with your table to take down notes and remain present throughout the throughout the discussion. Any form of video or voice recording of the discussion is prohibited and will be subjected to fines and penalties under the contemplation of RA 10173 or the Data Privacy Act of 2012. Thus, consent must be made pertaining on the recording and taking pictures before doing so. So, if you intend to take a photo or video recording or voice recording, you have to ask me permission. Participants are encouraged to open their video cameras during the whole duration of discussion but must confirm to house rule number 6. So, you are highly encouraged to stay seated with your table to take down notes and remain present throughout the discussion. You have to follow instructions that will be given by the host every before the start of the class. Kaya don't ever late. Uh, don't ever you make yourself late because the most important instructions are always being stated before the actual discussion. So UC is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment for all its students. May it be male or female and the LGBTQ. Gender-based sexual harassment in classroom or in online classes are strictly prohibited. It includes acts that use information and communication technology to frighten victims through the following. So these acts are prohibited. Physical, psychological, and emotional threats. You shall not make threats. You shall not threat your classmates. Unwanted sexual, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist remarks and comments. Online, whether on public post or through private messages. And take note, ladies and gentlemen, ha, bawal din kayong mag-PM, mag-chat ng mga bastos. What? Why? Because your private messages can, your screenshot, the screenshots can serve as an evidence against you. Okay? Invasion of victims' privacy through cyber stalking and incessant messaging. That's also a no-no. Kung di mag-reply, huwag nyo nang i-message bam. Recording or sharing any of the victim's photos, videos, information, or screenshot of private conversation without permission. Not unless you are uh, a victim of a cyber crime, then you can present a screenshot in your behalf to serve as evidence for you. Pero kung uh, ang balak mo lang imamahiya, then you are not allowed to make use of that screenshots or private conversation without permission. 
pwede kang ma-held liable for Data Privacy Act and Cybercrime. Liable din, cyber liable din. Pagka nagsinungaling kayo, nagpost kayo ng maling information about the someone na sinisira nyo. Bawal din yun ha. Don't ever do that. Impersonating victims' identities. So, bawal nyo rin i-impersonate ang isang classmate nyo or even your instructor. Pagka instructor nyo may ano, may paborito siyang word na sinasabi, 